right so in this final video we'd like to talk about the rendering process of the ambers and then we're going to take that thing to the after effects and compose our fire and ambers both so let's begin with the very first step that is to open the render settings and here again i'd like to go with the with legacy settings that the settings that they just use in case of the fluid solvers while taking care of the rendering of the fire the tree fire and here I just would like to tweak one single attribute that is anti-aliasing contrast well reason because you know the particles are quite tiny in the size so they might need some more sampling so instead of the 0 0.050 that we used in our previous module in case of the fluids we like to go with 0.10 that we're gonna take care of the particle aspect in a more sophisticated way and it's it gonna sample out the things in a better way and we we'll like to take the max sample level one again and again we we'll like to go with the volume sampling that is set to the one by default no issues in case of the filtering which is a very important aspect we we'll like to take the filter from the box to the Michelle and we we'll like to stick to the four is to four okay so with that, our render settings are completely done. And like to go to the common, you can just name it new underscore ambers. I can take down your render frame just for the testing mode. Close them up and make sure that you switch all these render layer off and switch only the ambers underscore rendering. The clear reason is that you can just trace out from here also. Now that is indicating that the render layer has been set to the ambers rendering only. And we do not want any other layer to come in the rendering process. Once it is done, you are required to go to the batch render process. All right. So once your batch render process is done, let me just gonna open up with the the render output that we just got. So here goes with the final rendering of our embers, and it's quite a good thing. I really gonna like the motions and the behavior of the particles. It's, it's 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 quite a good and you can see here that the particles which are been getting stretched they are quite lengthier in their you can say the stretchness is basically you know re representing the faster movement of the particles which indicates the particles carrying more velocity and once they are you know rising up you can see that the velocity is being getting shrink and now the particles are again coming back to the point mode so with this our rendering process is done and we have already understood the concept of the rendering as well as the particle shading now it's time to move to the after effects and we would like to see the impact so here in the project i would like to call the new embers and i'm going to drop it over here so let's just play the timeline you're going to see the same things just we notice inside the f check and now it's, it's a pretty straightforward particles they already do have got the colors and all so we're gonna put them put them back to the we can just you know duplicate another layer put that thing to the screen if required if you want to do some color corrections or not and we also like to go with the CC color again and in this case we need to be very careful we won't gonna go to the dark areas we like to go to the brighter areas and we can also change the colors now this section I would like to leave up to your own artistic decisions where you would like to end up yourself adjusting the colors gamma and everything and once you are done with this settings it's time to open up the layer for the for the fire and just play the timeline here you can see that they are getting properly blended inside the scene so you may gonna take the mode from the screen to the linear dodge depending upon your as you know you like so I guess we could give some little dark values that would be also fine so here we goes with the with the rendering and the shading of our embers and the fluid the burning process of the tree and this case uh, in case of the embers specifically I don't want to use any blur I don't want to use any you know Gaussian blur because that will gonna take the realism a little bit more away from the reality so let's just you know do not use any of the motion blur inside this however we do acknowledge that the ambers may do have a lot of the blur in the beginning but we could avoid in that case because they're already you can see that they have just 
blended up themselves with the fire okay so with that we are done with the process of the simulation of the burning tree and the embers now I'd like to show you the final video which I've been waiting for you to see and to just play the timeline yeah it's going to be pretty nice and quite okay I should say I'm really gonna like the behavior of the fire as you can see the fire is coming from the bottom sections of the tree being a little bit more transparent so that's also gonna add some more aggressiveness to the fire and the another good thing is that we do have the synchronized embers so they are moving with respect to the velocity vectors of the fluid so the overall result is quite a good and this three background I just created for the overall look and feel and the rendering purpose and we're not going to include that how do we constructed the background because obviously that's going to be totally different scene so here only we like to focus on the fire and the simulation process of the embers and I hope so guys you must have understood the process and the concept so we like to expect from you to come up with the best show reads and the remarkable results and it was quite a good to create the simulation process of the burning tree hope to see you soon